The idea of giving thanks is expressed through the Hebrew word hoda'a. And as is true of so many words, there are multiple aspects of meaning in hoda'a. And I want to explore a couple with them, a couple of them with you today, right now, through the lens of this week's parasha. And not just the technical meaning of the word hoda'a, but two motions of the soul, which can help us to access the practice of giving thanks. At the opening of the parasha, parasha Vayetze, Yaakov is on the run. He's leaving home in Beersheba, running away from his brother and who wants to kill him, and his father, who he's just deceived. And at a certain point, it's all too much. And he does what all of us do when everything is too much. He goes to sleep. And because he sleeps, he dreams. And what does he see? Something he never could imagine. A ladder stretching from the earth to the heavens. The arc of the sky above him, angels going up and down. And so when he awake, Yaakov exclaims, Achen yesh adonai b'makom anochi lo yadati. Surely the Lord is present in this place, and I did not know it. Now this is actually the first aspect of Hoda'a, the first motion of the soul which is really required in giving thanks. It hit masrut, a giving of oneself over to a new, all-consuming recognition, the acknowledgement of a new reality. Now this ability to recognize, literally recognize, to rebuild my frame of understanding in light of what's been done for me, is the beginning of real gratitude. Of course, Yaakov himself wasn't grateful in the classic sense for this vision that he'd received, but he had an aha moment. He had a moment in which he was transformed in the way in which he saw the world. And through this, he teaches us the first step toward gratitude, the first motion of the soul, that it begins with a deep acknowledgement, a giving of oneself over completely to new awareness. And so the question is, what is the awareness born there that allows for real gratitude? And for this leads us to Leah. So Yaakov reached his destination in Haran, and soon afterwards he married the sisters Rachel and Leah, as well as their handmaidens Bilhah and Zilpah, and he began to build a family. And I'm sure you can imagine that this was far from a simple situation. And we can see from the names which Leah gave to her first three sons that she herself was hurting inside. Now my husband will love me. The Lord heard and gave me this one also. This time, my husband will be attached to me. But when it came to her fourth child, something changed. She declared, this time I will praise the Lord. I will give thanks to God. And so she called his name Yehuda. Now the sages teach that Leah knew Yaakov was destined to have 12 sons. And she'd done the math. 12 sons divided by four wives means three boys each, meaning that with Yehuda, she'd received more than her share. Leah's upwelling of true gratitude gives its name not only to her son Yehuda, but to his descendants, the Yehudim, the Jews, who are meant to embody this quality to the day. And that quality is the second motion of the soul that allows for true thanksgiving. The first was this hit masrut, Yaakov's willingness to give himself over wholly to a new way of knowing the world. And his acknowledgement that God is in this place is echoed by Leah's hapa'am. This time something was different. And what was different was that after this hit masrut, the acknowledgement, comes an element of hit batlut, of self-nullification, but of a very special kind. You know, one of the greatest barriers to saying thank you is our sense of entitlement. If I feel that what I've received is due to me, then why would I ever say thank you? But if I recognize that I'm not actually entitled to anything, not even life, then suddenly everything which I receive becomes a source of gratitude and thanksgiving. And so it was that Leah's fourth child, her so-called undeserved extra portion, was the one who invoked thanksgiving. And don't miss the target of her gratitude. This time I will give thanks to the Lord, she says. Her experience of abundance that came from letting go of any sense of entitlement, combined with an acknowledgement of the source, which allowed her to truly give thanks, not just for the gift, but for the giver as well. We should all be blessed to do both on this coming day.